Hi everyone, welcome to the Birthing at Home podcast. I'm Elsie, your host. I've had two home births in April 2020 and recently in June 2023. I'm a mental health nurse and an ex-student midwife that still has a strong passion for birth and supporting women. This is the fifth episode for the Birthing at Home podcast. The podcast now has over 200 downloads, which is very, very cool. If you want to share your birth at home story, whether that's home birth or free birth, please send me a message on the podcast Instagram, which is birthing at home underscore a podcast. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people who are the traditional custodians of the land I'm recording on in Nam, Melbourne, Australia. I would also like to acknowledge that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been birthing at home, on country, for tens of thousands of years prior to the British invasion and acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded. On today's episode, I chat with Lauren from Corinjung Heights, just below the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. She is mum to almost two-year-old Matteo and newborn Luca. She is also a vet and the partner to Remy, who is from France. Welcome, Lauren, to the Birthing at Home po- I podcast. Thanks for joining me on Monday morning. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for joining me. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, your family? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Lauren. Um, I'm a vet. I do equine surgery specifically. Um, and my partner, Remy, he's, um, he's actually French. We've been together here in Australia for about four years now. Um, and he's a fridge mechanic. Um, and we've got a toddler. His name is Matteo and he's, oh, must be nearly two. He's two in November. And yep. then a little three week old baby boy called Luca. And yep. our dog, Ziggy, a golden retriever, he's three years old um, and he's gorgeous. Mm, yeah. <laughs> nice. And um, remind me again where you live. Uh, we're in the Hawkesbury up in Currajong Heights, uh, just a, a, an hour or so out of Sydney. Yeah, yeah, cool. And so you're joining me today because Luca was born at home, is that correct? Yes, that's right. He He's my first home birth. My first was in hospital. But, yeah, I'm yeah. still riding cool. the high of Luca's birth. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited to hear it. Do you want to start by telling us a little bit about um, Mateo's birth? Yeah, that whole experience. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess when when I fell pregnant with Mateo, I was already starting to get pretty birth obsessed and like yeah. getting into research and um, really passionate about having a physiologic birth. I think partly because as a vet, that's very normal to me. Um, yep. but on the other hand, like as a surgeon, I do a lot of cesarean sections, so I know like both ends of it. Um, so yep. home birth wasn't on my radar at that point. I think I was just a little bit too, um, you know, I wasn't confident enough, but I was, um, dedicated to trying to have like a water birth. So I went private for his, um, birth and I chose the hospital and the OB like to try and give me the best chances of that. And so that was, we went to the San Hospital in Sydney, which was actually where I was born or my siblings were born. Oh, wow. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And it was great. Like, it was a really great experience, continuity of care, really great OB. Um, I got, um, I labored at home, then went to my sister's place because she's a bit closer. We went in. Yeah. I ended up being in the water um, for about six hours. So I got in a bit soon with him. But I think he wasn't in the greatest position. Is I think posterior and then turned, and that's probably yeah. what kind of slowed down that later part. But still managed managed to push him out, um, you know, relatively well, and didn't have any tears. So it was still a really great water birth in a hospital. But then yeah. we did have some complications after with him. So I think it was about four hours after he went into respiratory distress and had to go to oh, special wow. care. So it was all a bit like unexpected, considering it had been such a great birth. Um, and yep. in hindsight, they're not sure whether he, you know, aspirated a bit of fluid or didn't clear his chest well. Um, but then he spent the next five nights in special care. So we were oh, separated wow. yep. and I was pumping. So that was a bit stressful. Um, yep. And I was, you know, obviously passionate about breast- breastfeeding too. But luckily, once he was out of special care, like my milk had come in with a vengeance, probably too much for more the pumping. But yeah. we ended up having a you know a good breastfeeding journey and so I think we went home after day seven and yeah, we had a, a good good postpartum after that. Yeah. But it was just yeah. weird, like yeah, not not holding him for like four days. Um Yeah. So I definitely wanted How many weeks was he? Uh he was I went into labor one day before my due date. So he was 
oh. pretty much on time. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. What I should mention is that time I lived over an hour from the hospital. Um, yeah. So I had elected to have a local midwife do my postpartum care because um, yeah, I also cool. knew in the private system, like, you get your six-week check and that's it. And so I'd connected with Emma, who's a local private midwife, who, um, and also a lactation consultant, and I wanted to have someone on standby for support, I guess, for birth. Sorry for yeah. feeding. Um, so that's where I met her, and she's the one who did my home birth. That's yeah, that's really cool continuity. Um, yeah. Do you have any family about like um, Remy? Your yeah, husband, you said is from France. yeah. So he's French. So his family's all overseas. Um, but yeah. my my sister's about forty minutes away, and then my mum's about an hour away. Um, but mum's great. She looks after Mateo one day a week, so she's out here a lot. Um, yeah, no. So, yeah, she's – and they're, I'm very close with them. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so they've been a big part of my journey too. Actually, mum was at my, my first birth. She was – so I had a doula um, and then I had Remy. And somehow, even though it was COVID, we managed to sneak mum in as well, which was amazing. Wow. It was lucky because we went into hospital about 3 a.m. and I think we just managed to sneak her in. But I was so thankful to have her there. She pretty much held yeah, my hand yeah. the whole time. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. How So before you had Mateo, had you known what home birth was? Probably not. I think I discovered it um, as I was researching during my pregnancy with Mateo. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's when I sort of got into it and I was certainly very interested by the idea and that was part of the yeah. reason, I guess, I wanted to connect with Emma because I sort of thought, oh, yeah, like if this goes well, next time I'm definitely home birthing. Yeah, so. cool. What kind of – what was the the reasons that you were drawn, I guess, to the idea of birthing at home? Um, I think the main – well, at least second time round, I wanted to avoid the horrendous car ride. Um, yep. <laughs> that was, yep. number, you know, high up on the list. And I guess by then I realized that, yeah, you know, birth is so normal and um, – you know, why, why go to a hospital? There's no need to do that. Um, yeah. And I, I've, we've got a beautiful house up here with um, a big fireplace and, like, high ceilings. And, like, ever since I've owned the house, I've always sort of thought, oh, this is such a beautiful house to birth in. So just, yeah, and I guess the toddler this time, having a toddler around to have to, yeah. like, drive him somewhere in the middle of the night. I was like, oh. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah, and, that yeah. definitely for us was a very big yeah. problem as well. Because when I've heard other stories of people going to have their babies in hospital, like that must be so stressful. I know having to have multiple people basically on call oh, yeah. to look after the other kids. And like, because I wanted mum to be at my birth again, um, yeah. I didn't want to have any restrictions on people. Like I wanted my mum, yeah. my sister, if possible. Although funny story, she's she was pregnant and due the same day as me this time. Um, what? So, oh my god, that's kind of a crazy separate side story. Um, yeah. So, so she ended ended up being at this birth too. Um, yeah. But yeah, just for all those reasons, and yeah, yeah I didn't want to spend time away from Mateo if, if possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, cool. So then you find out that you're pregnant with Luca. Yep. Yeah. And so how how did that? Yeah. Work out? Um. Well, again, funny story. So my sister, they'd just yep. done their first round of IVF and my yep. plan was to give her, you know, a good few months to get pregnant and then join her because I wanted to have yeah, kids yeah, yeah. at the same time but not exactly the same. Um, yep. So it was actually the day after Christmas she was going to pee on her stick. So she did that and she called us and she was pregnant and we are all so excited. And then I stood there thinking, now when am, when's my period due? It actually was my – it was actually my first postpartum period. Um, wow. Or, sorry, like I'd had one period and then I was doing yeah, yeah, yeah. ovulation testing as yeah. actually – as a con- contraception um, yeah. just because we wanted to wait a few more months before trying. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. had a little incident where there was a, <laughs> five days before I ovulated, there was an incident <laughs> and I was like, oh, five days, that's fine. Like I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah. then, yeah, when my sister, yeah, <laughs> when my sister told me, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, and so the next morning I woke up and peed on a stick. I was like, oh, here we go. Wow. So that's it was pretty so funny. Cool. What, so it was, it was yeah. super exciting, but the, the first trimester was stressful because I was so terrified if something happened, you know, with one of us, especially with her, I didn't want to yeah. get pregnant before her because I wanted her to, you know, be able to experience it. 
Um, yeah, yeah, But yeah. then I told her like a week after we had our dating scans and they'd given us the same due date, which is ridiculous. <laughs> that's – wow, that's so, so cool. It ended up being um, really cool to be able to share the journey with yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Was her journey quite different to yours? Um, I guess the way – I mean, she did IVF, so coming into it was a bit different. Um, yeah. But apart from that, I she had probably no, no, no education about birth, so I then yep. you know laid it all on her, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I pretty much forced her to do um, hypnobirthing, and yep. thank goodness because she did end up having an amazing birth. But she absolutely used and needed all of those tools, and her her I guess conception of birth from the start to the end changed dramatically from oh, we'll just see, you know, I'll take all the drugs, that's fine, to nup, I want a physiological birth, and she did it. Wow. So it was really incredible. cool. Go you. Yeah, it was, it was good. It, go yeah. 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 It was good. <laughs> so you did hip, Did you do hypnobirthing? Um, oh, sorry, for Mateo's birth, yes. With Mateo. Yeah. So yeah. that was then, amazing. Um, yeah. And then this time, um, yeah, the, my sister did, did the same one with this, the same person. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do any other birth education, birth prep kind of stuff with Luca? Um, no, I think by that point I was very immersed in like birth stories and podcasts and, you know, I had all the resources at my hands. So I did go along with my sister. I did go along to um, her the hypnobirthing course and did a refresher. Oh, cool. Okay. I didn't even know you could do a refresher. Yes. No. So, and the lady that we did it with, who's in Sydney, she was amazing. Um, she said I could just basically come along and do it, do it with my sister because um, yeah. I was making Karina go. So Karina and her partner went and then my partner felt like he was educated enough so he didn't want to go. So he stayed home with the toddler and my mum came along and she did it with yeah. me. Um, so oh, the whole family. Yeah, so it was actually really fun. So it was just like a yeah. two days weekend course. Um, it was yeah. a lot of just revision for me. But, of course, the second time you don't have enough time, you know, to really get into the headspace. So it was good because yep. it really kind of forced me to sit there and listen and start thinking about things, um, yeah, yeah, which was yeah. great. So that was really fun. Yeah, amazing. What did uh, Remy, like did, like, I'm not sure what it's like in yeah. France, but like what did Remy think about home birth? Yeah, so I think like most people who don't like, I guess, know much about it, the instant reaction was like, oh, like that's not safe. But then I spent yep. a lot of time, I guess, trying to educate him. He's not the sort of guy who's going to listen to a podcast or read a book. So yeah, I yeah, guess yeah. I would try to educate him myself um, yeah. and talk to him about how, yeah, like all the medical equipment they carry and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And he definitely came around, like took a little bit. I guess the other aspect yeah. for us, though, was the financial aspect um, yeah. because, yeah, it's a big financial commitment. Um, so he was a bit worried about that too. Um, when we had a, you know, a good other option, I guess what I, what I haven't mentioned yet, um, is the, basically this pregnancy. Yeah. I texted Emma straight away and said, yep, I'm in. But then I did carry a little bit of fear and hesitation, I think from what happened after Mateo's birth. Um, so I also called my OB and got in with him and I thought I'll just work out later, like what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. and I was actually, there's this program in Sydney, um, at that particular hospital, which has ended now, but I got in on the last day of the program. It's called the Swaddle program and it's a no, okay. no gap private, um, cover, which is pretty amazing because wow. most of the time with yeah, private, yeah, yeah. you still pay five or $6,000. Um, yeah. so I was lucky enough to do that program the first time. So I didn't pay a single thing except for the, you know, 500 bucks to go to the hospital. Um, so yeah. all your scans and everything's included. So I, I managed to get wow. into that again. So I then had to choose between, you know, this program, which wasn't going to cost me much at all to have, you know, a relatively good experience versus spending the money on a home birth when, yeah, yeah which we didn't really have the yeah. money and, you know, I was trying to save up so I could, you know, go, part, um, go on maternity leave and stuff. So it was a massive, yeah. massive decision. But um, I'm so, so glad that I decided, you know, oh, well, we'll be fine. You know, who cares about money? Yeah. We'll just save up as best we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you messaged Emma straight away. Yeah. And then uh, how often did you see Emma? Um, so with her, um, I probably didn't see her until, well, she does a monthly mother's group with her home birth lady. So I, I saw her a oh, few cool. times anyway. 
um, which yep. is really nice. She comes along to that. But we didn't yep. have our first appointment probably until late first trimester. Yep. And at that appointment, by then I think I'd had my, my early scans and stuff, which I did through the hospital. And there was probably a lot of discussion at that one about, I guess, dealing with some of my fears about like the possibility of transferring up the birth. I wasn't worried about birth at all. It was more like yep. what happens if baby has some breathing issues after and like that first yep. 24 hours of monitoring baby. Um, so we spent a lot of time talking about that and all the, the what ifs and possibilities. Um, and then she was really good. She said, look, you know, basically you just stay, stay in the program for now, do all your scans and tests up until 20 weeks. And then, you know, we can, we can decide from there if you're happy to, to keep going like on this path. Yeah. So that was a really good way to have, I guess I had my plan A, my plan B. Yeah. So then I saw Emma basically once a month, once I committed to home birthing. Um, yeah. And I can't remember exactly when I fully committed, but it was probably maybe not long after that 12, 16 week mark. Um, yeah. Okay. Once I sort of got my head around some of those, those fears. Yeah. It, is she a, um, but did she work in a kind of group yeah. setting? So was she independent? She, or? I think over the last couple of years has worked with um, her partner, Tina. Um, okay. So they, there's the two of them and they back each other up and then they have two yep. other midwives in the area who like a uh, plan, plan C, I guess. So yep. they have other backups as well. Um, yeah. And did you get to meet those backups? Or I met, yeah, yeah, list? I met Tina. And again, because Tina goes to the monthly mother's group meetings, I knew her from that. So yep. that was really nice. But then, yeah, I had, I think my 37-week appointment at home, um, Tina came to that one as well, and we had a good chat yep. about everything. Yeah, so amazing. I felt like I knew them both pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Did you, because you were um, tied in, I guess, to the uh, hospital system for a little bit or at least for scans and things, did you experience any negative um, comments or anything about birthing at home? No, but I didn't tell them, so they didn't have the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I basically, I stayed in the program until I got my 20 week scan. Um, yeah. and then once everything was good, I just sent them an email and said that, you know, I'd made the decision that I didn't want to travel that far and I was going to birth with my local midwife, um, at home yeah. and never even got a reply. So <laughs> Yeah. I was like, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, did you know or did you connect with um, many mums like in the mother, the home birth mothers group? Thing? Yeah, and they were a big part in helping me make the decision too. Um, yeah. Definitely like and, and that's something I actually started after Mateo's birth. Like um, even yeah. though I hadn't home birthed, Emma kindly said I could come along and, you know, probably if I hadn't done that for the last two years, I probably wouldn't have even – thought about doing it so it's yeah. really good there's that mother's group and then there's there's one other like there's one or two other home birth specific mother's groups in this area yeah well, so it's really nice yeah to be able to I guess hang out with like-minded people and hear their experiences and stuff and also to yeah, see absolutely. like it's really interesting of Emma's clients 95 percent of them are midwives so that just yeah, says really. so much to me about midwives they're the ones that know the system right and they're the ones that yeah. choose to birth at home so that says a lot yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah, um, somebody said to me the other day um, because my first was also born at home and um, I'm not sure if you can hear Frank. I can. It's like okay. play, playing with these things. Um, yeah, somebody said the other day, oh, it's like quite unusual to hear a story of a home birth like first, like from a first time. Yeah. Mom. But I owe that all to studying midwifery. Like I'm not a midwife. I didn't finish my midwifery, but – like I, I, I saw lots and lots of births and oh, I, wow. yeah, I knew what the system was yeah. like. It is interesting, and so isn't it? With, yeah, without that experience, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we'll never know. But That's amazing. Yeah, like I, I don't know what, what would have happened. I don't think I would have done a home birth. I think I would have been too fearful. Yeah. Um, for, yeah, similar reasons um, as anybody that doesn't know, like the fear mongering and mm. a misinformation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It also goes to show like the power of the stories. And- oh, definitely. Like I think that's birth stories has been my you know, biggest part of my education about everything along yeah. with podcasts. Yeah. I, rem- I remember, um, reading with my first son Murphy, uh, the Ina May Gaskin. Oh yes. I forget which book it is. It has like the birth stories, like a part of it. Yes. Like, yeah. The first half. The farm yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just remember being like, wow, like, 
that is amazing. Like they're just going to like birth on this farm. Yeah. Like they're just, you know, it's just like a, a community family affair kind of thing. Yeah. Like, nobody else is involved. No, it's really cool. Um, yeah, amazing. So with the fears that you had around Mateo's, like the po- initial postpartum uh, period after Mateo was born, did you seek like any psychological support or was it mostly just debriefing no. with Emma? No, it was just debriefing with Emma. And we talked a lot yep. about Mateo's birth and I guess she had some theories on what may have happened and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so that was that was enough. And I sort of thought as – the end date approached, I might still think about that. And even after birth, I thought I might think about it, but I didn't like as the end approached, I had no fear and I wasn't even thinking about that at all. So I must've dealt with it, I guess enough early on. Yeah. 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 That's great. Um, were you working at the, whilst you were pregnant with? Yes, I was. And it was extremely stressful at work. Um, our work was going through a lot of changes. We were short staffed. So it was really difficult um, and really stressful, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, it was a bit of a distraction and made the time go go by quickly, I guess. Um, yeah. But it did mean that I, I remember I, I got to August, uh, like in the last month or so, I was like, okay, now I really need to focus because um, yeah. I really didn't have much mental space to do anything birth prep before that. Um, yeah. But then in the last couple of weeks um, – I, you know, toddler daycare sickness. We actually had a really great winter as far as that that goes. But then yep. August, you know, the toddler got sick, then I got sick, had a week off, and then I ended up finishing up a bit early, which was nice because I wasn't planning to finish until 38, 39 weeks. Um, but I went into labor at 38. So wow. <laughs> lucky I finished early. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel like there was any impact? You know, um, I, I recently read – uh, the mental impact of being a vet is quite heavy. Yeah. Did you find that that impacted any thoughts that you had about being pregnant, birth, etc.? Um, not so. For for me, this at this time, it was more the workplace than the job. Um, yeah. But you're right. Like the mental load in the vet industry is crazy, and it's getting worse as we get, you know, more short staffed and, and things like that. But no, it yeah. was it was more the workplace stuff that was going on. Um, yeah. and the physicality of it as well. You know, I work with horses yeah. and because we were short staffed, I was probably maybe putting myself in situations that weren't necessarily super safe, but yeah, it definitely, I, I remember asking Emma at one point, like at one point does stress affect the baby? And she said, Oh, what did, well, her response was, you know, don't, basically don't stress about that. But when you're, if you're so stressed that like it's affecting your eating and like your daily life and that made me feel better because I'm like, nah, like I'm okay. I can, I can handle this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as, as I started to doing more birth prep at the end, I really started tuning out from work and doing more, yeah. you know, the hypnobirthing stuff. And that really helped a lot mentally. Yeah. 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 How did you feel like you were able to prepare with Mateo running around? Yeah, that was tricky, but I did sign him up for an extra day of daycare in the last month. Yeah. And that was amazing because yeah. it gave me one day a week, like without him, um, yeah. where I could actually get some things done. You know, I wanted to clean and prep and get baby stuff out. So that was a game changer, actually, having that extra yeah, day yeah, of daycare. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some space. Before yeah. Having yeah. two to juggle. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, cool. And so you went into labor 39 plus 6 with Mateo. Yes. And so – when did you did you have any like inkling of like when you thought you might <laughs> yeah. have to labor this time? Well, there was a full moon on the thirty first of August, so I was okay. like, okay, yeah, yeah. I booked my acupuncture for that day, um, and yeah. I was like, okay, I'll labor through the full moon and I'll birth on the first of spring. <laughs> so wow. that was what I was thinking because that would have been All set out. you know about thirty nine weeks, I think. Uh, you know, yeah. thinking maybe the second one might come a few days earlier. Um, yeah, 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 and. I had I didn't care when the baby came at all, except I didn't want it to come at the same time as my sisters because I wanted my mum yep. there and she wanted mum too. And um, yeah. she'd actually oh, um, right. they'd changed her due date based on the IVF to the third of September. So yeah, and I was thinking, oh, IVF babies just <laughs> go on time, you know. That's kind of I just need to avoid that day or around then. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so what date were you? What date were we actually? Ah, uh, the sixth, the sixth of September. Yeah. Um, 
So no, but in the last two weeks, probably from about 36 weeks, I was getting a lot of lightning crotch and pelvic and groin pain, um, okay. which I, I probably didn't have that with Mateo's pregnancy. Um, yeah. And so I was feeling pretty heavy and like like wondering how long I could go on for. And then actually the three days before labor started, I started getting a bit of bloody show at night. So I was probably only like 37 and a half weeks and I was like, oh, wow, like that's, that's a bit early. Um, yeah. But thinking, oh, this could go for a week or so. And um, I had an acupuncture session booked on the Thursday, the 24th, and I was pretty keen for that because I felt like my, my pelvis was asymmetric and I had all this nerve pain on one side and not the other. And I didn't feel yeah. like the baby was in the best position. Um, so then I was looking forward to that day. Um, and that's, that ended up being the day I went into labor. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, oh my gosh. And luckily Emma had brought the birth pool up the, the Friday before. So yeah. I had the birth pool, but then the birth. Had you blown it up? Uh, we blew it up on the weekend to test it, but then I didn't want like the toddler playing in it. So we took it down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. what we didn't realize was the bottom of it, um, the seal wasn't working. So I actually blew it up the, the day before I went into labor, the Wednesday, my mom and my sister yeah. came up just for a hangout day. And they helped me blow yep. it up and they helped me set up all my affirmations and candles. Oh, and amazing. So luckily we'd yep. done that then because I hadn't got around to that yep. yet. And yep, that's yep, when yep. we realized the birth pool, like the floor didn't blow up. So I texted Emma and she said, oh, that's fine. Like bring it tomorrow to the acupuncture because it's at the same place where she has her office and I'll switch yep. it for you. I'll give you a new one. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yep. So, yeah, we'd set up everything and my sister and I had done some like hypnobirthing stuff like in the birth space in the lounge room. We had all the curtains wow. drawn. So it was nice. We'd had yeah. time to do that. We took some photos. And the other thing we did that day was, you know, that silly baby mama dance, like that's on the internet. I don't Oh, like t- on TikTok. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. pregnant ladies like dancing, like being pregnant yeah. to the song. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. done that. We're actually in Mateo's pregnancy and went into labor oh, wow. three hours later. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we did it on the Wednesday just to make a funny video. And she was joking, like, oh, you know, I hope this doesn't put me into labor. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I think that's so special that you were able to do it all with your sister. Yeah, right? like, it was so cool. Man, those pictures must – yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. no, it's really amazing. What and that the fact that yeah. she got to be there, which she actually wasn't planning to come to my birth because I'd said to her, look, I'd love to have you, but, you know, you're about to give birth, so I don't know, you know, about being at someone else's birth. And I was a bit nervous if something did go wrong that it would scare her. Um, yeah. So she decided she probably wouldn't come. Um, yeah. But in the end, mum's car had broken down that day. So she yeah. drove mum out and I decided to stay and ended up staying the whole time. And I think yeah, it, was, well, so how, it was good for her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, that's probably like a good oxytocin Absolutely. Hit right before you need it. Although so. she was funny too because she's like, she, was ter- she wasn't ready to give birth in. She was terrified she was going to catch birth. She kept saying to my midwife, yep. this won't put me into labor, right? And she's like, no, no, it's fine. You're not going to catch the birth bug. <laughs> catch yeah. the birth bug. That's All that oxytocin. Um, so you were having like bloody shows at nighttime yeah. and you were having little pains and things like that. Yeah, yeah, just feeling really uncomfortable. Um, yeah. And then so that thir- the Thursday morning um, I woke up with a, like a dull backache um, all the way around my back. And I'd had just yeah. normal, I guess, Braxton hip tightenings over the last few nights as well. Um, yeah. But on that morning, they continued into the morning and they were more noticeable. Like instead of just a, this doesn't hurt, but I can feel that it's tightening, it was that real sharp little pinch at the front, um, yeah. which is exactly like for Mateo, that's exactly where I felt the contractions. And so mm-hmm. I felt that. I was like, oh, okay, that's a bit different between that and the backache. And then um, I had to get Mateo down to daycare. And in the car, I could, I just couldn't sit down. I was like, oh, okay, that says something. I had the seat yeah. like tilted forward because I was terrified of, you know, a posterior baby. I was trying not yeah. to sit back at all. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was like leaning forward in the car, <laughs> trying to tilt my pelvis forward, <laughs> yeah. trying to drive. Yeah, so that was interesting yeah. getting down to daycare. Um, yeah. And then, and then going into daycare and I guess yeah, everything's fine. I know. I was like, Oh gosh, and luckily he's pretty good at walking in himself now. I just handed him over. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then yeah, driving home, it was, you know, it's a 40 minute, 45 minute round trip to do all that. 
So wow. I got home and thought, oh, I'll just see, you know, see what happens now that I'm home. I'll, yeah. um, I'll relax. But then, no, I didn't. I decided to clean the house because I'm like, well, you know, I better clean the house in case today's the day. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I also had a chiropractic appointment that morning and it was at, I think, t- yep. 1030. That was only like five minutes back down the road. So that was pretty close. Um, yeah. But I was super keen to get to that. So I cleaned the house yeah. um, and by this point, yeah, there was definitely little surges coming, you know. I don't know how often I was trying to ignore them. Um, yeah. But I had sort of texted my mum and Remy to say, hey, things might be happening just to give you the heads up. And, of yeah. course, like my mum had totally jinxed herself because like a week earlier she told me that this was the worst day for her because she had no one to cover her at work. <laughs> and I was like, mum, I'm like, come on, I'm 38 weeks. There's no way, like no way. Yeah. Anyway, she'd found someone for work, so that was fine. So I drove back down the hill to my Kyra appointment and I had the birth pool to give back to Emma and get the new one. Um, of course, yeah. And I so was carrying the birth pool over my back and walked in like huffing and puffing and Emma's like, what the hell? Yeah. What are you doing? It's like, I'm returning this <laughs> one. She's like, and then I was like, and I think I'm in labor or something's happening because I was yeah. definitely, yeah, couldn't sit down by that point. And yeah. so oh my gosh. she was like, well, oh, you shouldn't be carrying that pool. So she took the pool and went and put it in my car for me and I went into my car session and I tried to sit down but couldn't sit down. And then Emma just yeah. came in. She's like, okay, so what's happening? Just, you know, talk to me a little bit. I'm like, <laughs> um, well, I, you know, these, these surges are coming. I don't know how often. I'm trying to ignore them. I can't sit down. My back hurts. She's like, okay, no problem. Well, you just keep me informed. <laughs> and then, yeah, the Cairo adjusted my right side and – instantly my groin and inguinal area felt so much better she, like I was yep. pretty bound up and yeah so she adjusted me and I wasn't there for too long but then felt like a lot better and a lot more open I guess um and she yep. sort of said giving me some like I guess positions and stretches to do because I was really tight in the front of the belly um yep. so she said like if this is early labor I'll you know here's some things to do so I was it was good I had that kind of fresh in my mind as well um yep. on yep. you know good positioning for bubs um yep. so once I got home again um I didn't want to try and carry the birth pool in so my neighbor came over and helped do that so we got the birth pool out um and then I potted around the house and just you know set up some snacks and set up you know candles and things like that for about half an hour but then by yep. 11 they were like yeah I was realizing I was probably properly in labor because they were coming pretty yep. regularly I don't know maybe every four or five yep. minutes um, yeah. and I rang Remy. What time was daycare drop off? Um, I probably went down there about 8 a.m. I think I got back yeah. about 8.30. And then, yeah. yeah, I went down to Cairo at, at 10. I was home at 10.30 from Cairo. And I think on the way home, yeah. I'd rung Remy and said, hey, like, definitely something's ca- happening. You should probably head this way. But then by 11, I have another phone call. I was looking back at my phone to work this all out. At 11, yeah, I yeah. rang him. I said, you need to come home now. Like, this yeah. is happening. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he was coming home, but he was a bit slow about it. He sort of thought it might take all day. So he didn't get yeah. home until 12.30. And by that point, I was, yeah, like having to sway and breathe through them. And I think I'd, I actually had the tens on. I had the tens on the back and a heat pack on the front and my birth comb. And that was like, yeah. that was my little trifecta. It was perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely tried to lie down at one point and just rest, but there was no way um, that wasn't going to happen. So just yeah. kind of in the in the bedroom, um, I've got like a dresser, and that was just perfect elbow resting height just to kind of stand this yeah. way. So then when he got home, we had to put the fairy lights on the pool still. So I'm a bit of a control freak, so I tried to help him do that, <laughs> but um, – yeah, I was in the pool, like, trying to help him do that, and I had to get out. I was like, no, I can't do this. So then I just yeah. went into my room in darkness, and he did all the setup because, you know, there's a bit to do in terms of setting up the, the water. And we had a, yeah. um, a camping gas hot water system, which, okay, thank yeah. goodness, because, like, the hot water, when I showered, ran out after, like, 25 minutes. Um, yeah. So he was starting that. And the other thing he would um, built was, like, a recirculating water heater. So that he could okay. fill the pool and then just set the temperature and walk away, basically. Wow! So that was good. That's pretty good. Yeah, he was really yeah. into like forward. Thinking. Yeah, like into that was his job, you know. Um, yeah. So he did a great job at that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so yeah, so he's home at 12.30. Um, I think my mom and my sister arrived at quarter past one, by which point yeah. I'd already started throwing up. So like wow. things were well, things were intensifying, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, so they arrived at quarter past one, and I'd updated my midwife, Emma, along the way. I sent her a text which yeah. said, you know, good surges, four, four minutes apart, I'm, I'm doing fine sort of thing. Because I, I guess on my mind, the hardest decision factor for me was when to call the midwife because I knew yeah. that, like, they had said, basically, you call me when you would normally go to hospital. Um, yeah. So I knew I didn't want to have them there, like, too early. Um, yeah. And they're, like, she lives, like, seven minutes down the road. Yeah. But I also, yeah, that was kind of on my mind a fair bit is when to call yeah. them. So mum and Karina yeah. had arrived. And so the, it was really nice having them because by that point I needed more support and Remy was still yeah. super busy. So they were doing yeah. um, like hip squeezes and like light touch oh, masks. So that was good. Yeah, that seemed yeah. to help a lot. I was just kind of standing, swaying, and they would one of them would squeeze my hips and kind of sway with me. Um, so yeah. they were doing all the physical support while Remy was kind of doing all the pool stuff and then he would yeah. just come in, come and go. And that's kind of yeah. how we stayed for the next couple of hours. Um, yeah. And then I would alternate. I tried the toilet a few times, but it was pretty uncomfortable. So just the, did you keep the tens on? Yes, the entire time. I, I did go in the shower um, at one point, but yeah, the tens was yeah. on, and I loved the tens. Like it was so good, and the birth comb. Yeah. That birth comb thing is just. I don't know how it works, but it's amazing. Um, yeah. So I would squeeze yeah, that. I've heard lots of people talk about the birth comb. I think um, I didn't really learn about the birth comb until. Yeah, maybe just before Frankie was born, but everyone's talking about it. And it's I'm so like, weird oh, how it I works. I want to try it. Yeah. Like I just held um, it the whole time. Was- yeah, I was uh, recording yesterday and um, the guest that I had on yesterday, she was saying that her doula gave her Banksia seed pods. Oh. Do you know what they look like? I do, yes. Yeah. The same so, concept, um, I guess. Yeah, except they have like lots of different like because they're circular. Um, yeah, it's like a, a, a tube. Almost, yeah, it's like but, a cylinder. Yeah, with like like um, yeah, like sharpish bits, I guess, all around and squeezing those um, because like the comb can only you know get yeah a line. Well, some people of, use a spiky you know. ball as well. Oh, like in, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. And I think of all these things. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's so cool. Um. Yeah, okay, so you were getting uh, a lot of benefit from those things. Yeah, definitely. And I did have a heat yeah. pack on. I had one, like, tied around me on my on the front of my belly. That's where I had yeah. the heat, and that was great because that's where the real sharp kind of pinching pain was at the front there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was good. I think this time, and I had my music, you know, affirmations and all of that, um, but this time yeah. I didn't, like, with Mateo, I went for his birth, I went so into my head. At this time, I was a lot more aware of what was happening. Okay. And I'm not sure why. And I, a few times I said, oh, I need to go in my head. I need to go in my head. Um, and I think part of it was on my mind, like, someone's going to have to go get Mateo. Like, don't forget Mateo. And, like, kind of looking oh, at the time yeah. so that we didn't forget oh. to pick up Mateo. Um, yeah. And we had a few options. Like, you know, our neighbor could have gone down. Um, you know, mum was there. She could have gone. There was a few people who could have gone. But anyway, I think it was about 3.30 that I sort of, was finding it all pretty intense, you know, I was still vomiting here and there and I was getting a bit, um, yeah, starting to struggle a bit. And I said to, to Remy, call them, call them em- Emma, call the midwives. Um, yeah. So he had a chat to, to them and I think Remy thought I was doing just fine um, and sort of said, you know, how things were going. And But then they, Emma said, you know, oh, does she want us to come up? And I sort of misinterpreted that as, oh, okay, like they think I'm fine. Like they don't think they should come yet. So I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. That's fine. I just wanted a change. I just wanted something to change. And I thought if they were here, maybe that's a change. It's funny. In hindsight, Emma said she was sitting on the edge of her seat ready to come then, but wanted like wanted my permission to come. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So I totally misinterpreted that whole situation. Um, yeah. But that's fine. So they didn't come. And at that point I said, I'm going to get in the shower. So we've got um, a double shower. So we've got – it's quite a big shower. I had the ball in there, the mat, and then you've got like yeah. a shower on a hose that I could reach down to my front of my belly oh, brilliant. and then yeah, have the yeah, water yeah. on my back. So that was yeah. amazing. It just allowed me to relax because I felt like I wasn't relaxing very well. And so I did some lunges, some squats, um, and really tried to kind of relax into it a bit more. 
And yep. that felt great, but the water ran out after 25 minutes. Oh. So I was like, oh, okay. So I got back out and, you know, 10 straight back on, back to the comb. So I think it was about five past four at this point. And so then Remy decided that I, I seemed to be doing a bit better and he would go to daycare and get Mateo. So I think yep. he left at 10 past four. And then yep. at 4.15, my waters exploded everywhere. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All over my sister's feet. Like, I was standing up, and it was the loudest bang because it hit. I had, like, a plastic mat I was standing on. So yep. it hit that and just went bang everywhere. So yep. um, And you just said that uh, the daycare, <laughs> the daycare yeah, journey 40, is like 40 minutes. Yeah, it's a good 40-minute round trip, 45 yeah. minutes. Oh, no. So I immediately said, <laughs> Emma, like, get Emma here. <laughs> Um, yeah 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 so mum thank goodness mum had and by this stage Remy's already gone he's already gone yeah so I think mum rang Emma and said yeah "Yeah, you better come because I knew that things were about to get real and um I don't know maybe I even felt him drop but I felt like something just changed that was what I was looking for like at about 3 3 30 I was like this is getting really hard I need a change and this is the change that I needed (laughs) yeah so basically the next surge I said screw this and jumped in the bath in the pool yeah um I felt like I needed permission from, like, I needed something to happen to jump in the pool because with yep. Matteo's birth, I was in there for six hours. It was too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so mum and rung Remy and he's like, well, I'm nearly there. I might as well keep going, basically. Like, someone's yep. got to get the kid. I was like, well, that's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think he, he yeah. didn't want Matteo to be freaked out and he's never had anyone else come pick him up. So yeah. I think, like, it was the right that's thing fair. to do in the end. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got in the pool like pretty much straight away. I think about four twenty, and um, the midwives like Emma was here. You know, maybe ten minutes later. I think by about four thirty. Um, yeah. And I did in the pool. I tried on my hands and knees, but the water sort of wasn't high enough to make me feel buoyant. So then I went yeah, on my okay. side, and that's actually for Mateo's layout. I spent the entire time on my side, and being on my yeah. side, I was floating, and that felt amazing. Um, yeah. So then I was in there probably only about. I, no more than 15, 20 minutes before I felt the pressure and then yep. had the, you know, the fetal ejection reflex and was yep. involuntarily pushing. Yeah, I forget all the time of this last bit. Oh, yeah, so the That's midwives right. were here at, at 4.35. They checked the Doppler. Um, and then at 4.50, they heard me pushing. Yep. And, and then apparently at 4.52, they could see the head and Remy still wasn't back. And yeah. <laughs> then at 4.54, Remy arrived back. Um, oh so gosh. he got there just I'm gonna as, get chill. Yeah, yeah, like the head was crowning, and it's funny because I felt that, like you feel the ring of fire, and I, I felt that. I was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of sucked him back in. Yeah, I think part of me was waiting yeah. for Remy, but part of me like just didn't want to push through that burn. Um, but yeah, then it's on, like intense. Yeah, <laughs> but then on the next surge, yeah. the head came out. Um, so Remy just wow. made it, and then I think it was only one surge later at four fifty nine, he was born. And my midwife, wow. what did she do? She helped um, between the head and the shoulders was a little slower than what she expected. So she just put, okay. um, she just checked with her finger, checked the shoulder, and I think pushed one back just to help him out a bit. Um, yep. And then he, yeah, he flew out just fine. But it's interesting wow. with the shoulders because um, with Mateo, I remember thinking for his birth, uh, the head was fine, but the shoulders felt massive. That was the hardest part which isn't really yeah. normal. Most people say the head's the hardest part. And yeah, the same thing yeah. for Luca, like the head came out fine, but then like getting the shoulders, like a big push. So yeah. in hindsight, Emma thinks that, um, you know, my, my pelvis is big enough just to get out this size baby. And that's why he came early. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he came out at 4.59 and he was immediately screaming. Um, yeah. It was really loud. So I was actually laughing because I was like, oh my God, that is so loud. So just yeah. sitting in the pool laughing and he came up onto my chest um, and then my sister brought Mateo in. She just got him out of the car. So he came in yeah. and was pointing at the baby and because we'd been talking to him all the way along like about Bubba Luca. Yeah. I'm like, oh, look, it's Bubba Luca. Yeah. And he was so good. He took it so well. He's like, ah, oh, Bubba. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Yeah. So it was really nice Like, because I kind of wanted Mateo there, but I wasn't sure and my partner really wasn't sure. And in the end, he yeah. sort of was there like like a second after he came out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good. Yeah, really at like the perfect moment. Yeah, it was really, re- really good timing in the end. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. for the placenta, um, I stayed in the pool. It didn't feel like long, but it was, it was half an hour. Um, and then I had, yeah. had a few contractions and vomited again, and that's when the placenta came out on a vomit. So 
that was yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of, yeah, the vomit pushed it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, And so yeah, that yeah. came out in the pool. Yeah. Which is good because I, I didn't mention that with Natalia's birth, but um, I'd had a physiological birth and third stage, but because I was yeah. in a hospital, they, like they didn't give me the oxytocin, but they did like aggressive massage on the belly and uh, pulling yeah. on it. So it wasn't oh, properly, you know, physiologic. And it yeah. took like nearly an hour and it was horrendous, like what they did to try and get it out. So yeah. this was a lot nicer. It just came out on its yeah. own. Um, it was a much yeah. better experience. Yeah. So you were still in the pool when the placenta came? Yeah, out. still in the pool. So then we just yeah. put it in a little bowl. It was just floating yeah. next to me. Um, yeah. And then I was, I was pretty happy to get out then. So I think Remy cut the cord in the pool. Um, yeah. And then I got out and just like one step onto the couch. Um, yeah, I was funny. I got as soon as I got onto the couch, I had like the full body shakes. I was freezing cold uh, and probably adrenaline too, I guess. Yeah. But just the full body shakes. So we had like a thousand blankets and then like a heat pack and everything. But yeah, it was so nice just to like climb onto the couch. Um, and where was your sister and mum at this time? Oh, they were just hanging out in the room. I think the midwives because I had a student midwife too. Um, oh, cool. Who is a friend of mine from the gym and also had home birth with Emma. <laughs> so, yeah. And she's, you know, she's yeah. learning to be a midwife. So she's desperate to see home birth. Um, yeah. So I think they were just hanging out in the room next door. But mum and Karina were around. And yeah, we all just kind of sat on the couch for a bit. Um, but then for me, <laughs> the afterbirth pain started, which was horrendous. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I, did you get that second time? The second time I did, yeah, but yeah. it took me by surprise because with yeah with Murphy, I I um yeah I definitely didn't yeah I don't remember experiencing afterbirth afterbirth pains, but with Frankie, absolutely, yeah, I was like, what is this? I know, no I was like, me about I this. know, I was sort of ready for it because I actually did have it with Matteo, but I thought okay, yeah. I thought with Matteo it was because they'd done all the like the massage on my uterus. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so then that started, like, pretty – and it was just, like, having one constant contraction for, like, 30 minutes. It was yeah. horrible. So they actually put yeah. the TENS back on me um, and gave oh. me a heat pack, and that was amazing. Like, the TENS oh. was really good. And I actually wore the yeah. TENS for the first 36 hours post-birth. Um, wow. Because, like yeah, – I never yeah. thought about that either. Oh, it was yeah, so okay. good. So a heat pack yeah. on the front, TENS on the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Nurofen and Panadol. Like, I took that straight away. That helped, too. But yeah, like, cause I, they were so intense that I was vomiting again. So then, yeah, wow. I vomited, I think, for the first 24 hours or so every time I had them. Oh, um, my gosh. <laughs> Did you vom- vomit so much with Mateo as well? Yeah, it seems to be my go to thing yeah. with pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, and was that like, it, like, how. Because obviously, like, during labor and the whole birth process, it's, it's kind of like a marathon and you've got to be mindful to keep, like, at least some fluids down. Yeah. How did that impact? If, like, yeah. You know, Look, if with Mateo's so birth, it was, I mean, that was 12 hours and it probably threw up for yeah. four or five hours. So I was extremely yeah. dehydrated and I think that played into some of the stuff that happened afterwards. But this time yeah. I was sipping on coconut water, like, the whole time and it was shorter, like, from – you know, probably from 11 a.m. or whenever you call active labor, it was only yeah. six hours or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a lot shorter. So I probably only f- threw yeah. up for a few hours. So I was fine this yeah. time and I had a nice big drink of water after. And I said, you yeah. know, drink this. And then um, she helped me to the toilet and did a wee. And so it was a lot better this time. Yeah. How much did Luca weigh? Um, he was 3.65. Yeah. So and Mate- much, Ms. Mate- he was three point five eight, so very similar. Wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like I think, like Emma says, she reckons that's why he came early because I mean he would have been a big boy if, if I'd gone another two or more weeks. Yeah, two or three. Yeah. weeks. Yeah. And yeah. I'm relatively were, small, I guess. Um, yeah, because you were thirty eight. Yeah, thirty eight plus one in the end. Thirty eight plus yeah. one. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And so what was, you know, in the lead up, you'd been getting these bloody shows and these little pains and stuff. What would the course of action been if you had have given or like gone into labor before that 38? Yeah. So from 37, that's when like you're good apparently. Yeah. Um, and Emma yep. said they're lenient, you know, yep. if it's a few days before and everything's yep. fine. But I think if you were you know 36 or something, then yeah, there might yeah. be a different story. But I had actually, yeah. as part of my care with Emma, um, she has an extra option if you want to sign up with a 
OB as well as a, I guess, a plan B as an insurance yep. policy. So I had taken that. So um, she works with a OB over at Westmead Hospital. So I was actually booked, oh, cool. I was booked in there under this OB's yeah. name in case, you know, they breach or something yeah, drastic yeah. changes in the last few weeks. So I think if we had transferred because of, you know, an early birth, it would have been over to Westmead. Yeah, wow. So when Luke is born, so there's the student midwife. Yeah. There's Emma and uh, backup midwife. Emma and Tina. Tina. Yep, they were both there. Yeah. And then uh, Matteo and Remy finally arrived. Yes, they finally got there. And um, uh, my sister. Then my sister. Was your mum and your sister. Mom. Yeah, and actually, I guess I didn't mention my um, neighbour, who's a very close friend. She loves photography. Um, and she'd oh, come cool. over to take some photos and video. Um, oh, wow. So she did the, the photos and she did an amazing little birth video. That was the main yeah. thing she did it because I was like, oh, wow. Remy's not here. Please video it like for Remy. But I wanted a yeah, video yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. So she made me a beautiful little birth video just of the kind of the last few bits and him coming out and stuff. So it was and so, yeah, quite the crowd um, in the end. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, it's your space and yeah. those are the people that you felt safe with and you had invited them into yeah. your space. And um, it's yeah, quite a different experience than, you know, random people Absolutely. To check you out and, and like see by what's that, Because I sort of stayed in my room. Like I was in my room in my little cave the whole time. I only came out yeah. at the end. And by that point, you know, you're so far in your head that it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Who was it? I didn't see anybody. Yeah, the only yeah, person I yeah. saw, I remember lying sideways in the pool and Emma's face appeared and I was so relieved. She came over to do the Doppler. I was like, oh, yeah. you're here. Like it just made me feel like, okay, this is happening now. <laughs> but wow. I don't think I even saw um, anybody else. And uh, so in those um, first couple of days, were there any concerns with Luca? Or? No, no, he was great. Um, he fed well. I had a, a bit of latch issues on one side. Um so I yeah. had some sore nipples for a while. But then I got those, yeah. um, actually, I think babe, maybe day four or five, I got those silverette things. Um, oh, yeah. They were amazing. They healed my nipples very quickly. Yeah. Um, but, no, he was good. And Emma just came each day. So, like, they probably left, the midwives left maybe 7.30 p.m. Um, yeah. Then we just kind of cuddled with Mateo, gave him a bottle, put him yeah. to bed. Of course, yeah. that first night, like, Luca did a great big sleep and I didn't sleep at all. I just laid there and stared at him trying to sleep. But, yeah. Um, and then Emma was back, I think, like 9 o'clock the next morning. Um, yeah. So, no, she was very happy with him. And it was great because I sort of didn't get to experience the first week of Mateo's life because he was in yeah. special care. So it was all very new to me, like to have this little sleepy baby that just sleeps. And every day she yeah. came, she would be like, okay, so today we expect him to be doing this. And, you know, he should maybe yeah. feed every four or five hours a day. And then the next day it's every three hours. and. Yeah. She would just tell me kind of what to expect for the next 24 hours. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good. You did, did you yeah. find that that has kind of, um, you know, for for if you ever had another child, would you have a home birth again? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. As soon as he came so, out, I was like, let's go again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it really did – like heal you of the fears yeah, that you definitely. had surrounding Mateo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and well. like to have, you know, both experiences and both were good births, but good births in different places. Like the experience was completely different. And I think yeah, yeah, probably yeah. the postpartum experience this time has been the, the biggest change. It's been so yeah. much better. Yeah. Um, like I can imagine, yeah, well, yeah, for a first time mom to birth at home, like the postpartum experience would be so nice. Yeah, well, uh, for me, it was like at the start of COVID as well. Oh, so yeah. even if I wanted people to come visit, yeah. technically they weren't allowed. Yeah, so okay. I personally have really enjoyed being in the comfort of my own oh, home. absolutely. I get to say who comes and goes. Yeah. I get to say what the temperature's like, yep. what sheets I have, how hot my shower is. Yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I think postpartum, like, yeah, giving birth at home, it's – such a game changer it is really. yeah to just not leave and yeah to not have to put yeah put the baby in the car and stuff I just stayed in yeah. like at this time I really wanted to like take it slow so I pretty much just stayed in my bedroom like the first week and yeah. those first few days just you know from bed to chair it was so nice yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, just taking things yeah. slow and just, yeah, soaking it all up because it, yeah, I mean, Frankie is 13 weeks now and I I can't believe that it just goes Yeah, so quickly. I know. I'm not sure if that's what you're experiencing uh, with Luca, but. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be a month at the end on. of this week. Yeah. That's crazy. I just, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think second time it's even faster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, your attention's kind of split. So. Yeah. Get half the time. Hey, he's like, talk, he's like talking and laughing at me. Oh, I don't know what this little guy's up to. You're not at all settled, are you? Hey? Oh. Hey, um, do you have any Oh, uh, The one thing I was thinking was like just with home birth because I was so worried about our water system um, yep. <laughs> and I was stressing about that. So like the camping gas hot water thing was so good. So that's something I didn't know about until I started doing research. Um, yeah, but okay. Yeah, I mean, if you're at all stressed about hot water running out, just get one of those. It's only a couple hundred bucks and we'll use it in the future. Yeah, cool. So. What does it – how does it actually work? So it's like you attach it to just a little LPG gas bottle and then you just run a hose in and a hose out. So we just had our two, like, food-grade hoses. We ran from the, you know, cold water in from the kitchen and then hot yep. water out straight into the bath. Yeah. So – it was yeah, good. Wow. So you could basically you run that for ages. Purchase them from? Oh, I mean Bunnings or online. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, and it's called just a camping gas. Yeah, system. yeah. There's heaps of different ones. That, I mean, I spent ages looking at all the reviews and stuff, and I just got yeah. the one with the fastest flow rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, so that was that good because we definitely would not have been able to fill that pool with our hot water. We've yeah. got like you know we're in tank water and we've got 300 liters hot water system, yeah. um, and it definitely wouldn't have worked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, for for both of um, my births, we ended up heating water on the stove. Yes. And, yeah. Um, that's just that's how like, it was. That's cumbersome, hey? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I didn't really yeah, care. You didn't care. I was yeah. just like, you guys make it happen. But you also need people and, to do that. And, like, if, you're, yeah. if your partner's the only one, because that was the other thing. Like, Remy was so busy doing stuff. I'm glad I had other people to support me. Like if it's just you and your partner and they've got to run around and do all the other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. <laughs> and stuff. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Somewhat conveniently, both our newborn babies started to make a lot of noise at the end. So to save your ears from all that delightful high-pitched noises, I've just cut it there. But it was amazing to listen to Lauren's recent home birth story, especially having had what I imagine was a very scary and disruptive immediate postnatal experience with her firstborn little Mateo. Also, I'm not sure about you, but I was almost on the edge of my seat listening to how her partner Remy almost didn't make the birth. The support Lauren was able to receive sounds amazing too, and I'm so happy to hear how healing her entire home birth was for her, even having had a relatively straightforward hospital birth with Mateo. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give the podcast a follow or rate it or both and please spread the word. I'm passionate about sharing the stories of everyday women choosing to birth at home. Please do not think your story is too simple or uneventful to want to share it. They all help to empower, inspire and motivate. As always, I've left some show notes in the episode description with things we spoke about in the episode. So please check them out and stay tuned for the next episode.